O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Dear friends, welcome you to this Spirituality of the Pandya series, the first, and this is the day three. Welcome you everyone again. Today we will be meditating on the kingship of the Pandyas especially with the themes of subduing the sea and carrying the weight of the world. So let us recollect ourselves before we offer a hymn to Christ our King. Now we sing to Christ the Lord of all spacing the nations, universal King, hail conquering Christ whose reign alone over our hearts and souls we own. Christ who art known the Prince of Peace, bid all rebellious tumults says, call home thy Straying sheep and whole forever, in on faithful fold, for this thine arms on Calvary were stretch across the purple tree, and their shot spear that through the rack led bare the heart that burned for man. For this in forms of bread and wine lies hid a planted to divine, and from thy own dead body runs the stream of life to all thy sons. Now we are going to meditate a psalm. We know that Pandyas were kings and rulers, and we have already seen in the previous sessions that all the kingship comes from God. All the king comes from kingship comes from God and there is no authority except that is from God. So keeping that in mind, we will now chant a psalm. The psalm is 144. The antiphon, yours is an everlasting kingdom, Lord, your rule lasts from age to age. I will give you glory, O God, my king. I will bless your name forever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. The Lord is great, highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. Age to age shall proclaim your words and declare your mighty deeds. Shall speak of your splendor and glory, tell the tale of your wonderful works. They will speak of your terrible deeds, recount your greatness and might. They will recall your abundant goodness, age to age shall ring out your justice. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. All your creatures shall thank you, O God, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God, to make known to men your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule lasts from age to age. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Antiphon. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. Lord, your rule lasts from age to age. Now we are going to, going to the scripture reading. Let us close our eyes and meditate and prepare our hearts to receive the words of our God. The scripture taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 25 to 28. He must be the king until he has put all his enemies under his feet and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. For everything is to be put under his feet. So when it is said that everything is subjected, this clearly cannot include the one who subjected everything to him. 
and when everything is subjected to him then the son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subjected all things to him so that god may be all in all our response your throne o god shall stand forever and ever your throne o god shall stand forever and ever the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of justice your throne o god shall stand forever and ever glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit your throne o god shall stand forever and ever dear friends we have been discussing about the spirituality of the pandyas so pandyas uh, were not just a temporal kings they were ruled many parts of south india as well as uh, in some parts of konkan towards goa also had a 12th century pandyan queen so i mean many other parts of the world also we can find like in you know, a lot of associations but apart from this being kings in a temporal sense that is uh, being a secular king being a king of ruling a certain people apart from that yesterday we had discussed that the kingship of the pandyas also has got a spiritual kingship which is kingship over five senses the eyes nose mouth ears tongue as well as our heart or our mind kingship over this five senses and five elements which uh, in uh, tamil also we call as panjabudams panjabudas so all these five elements should be conquered so yesterday we had seen on that so another one theme which is uh, coming frequently in this uh, pandian uh, copper plates everything is that they are the subduers of the sea so what about sea like you know so some of the scholars like you know they are interpreting that so if we see the fish uh, like in you know, a royal symbol of the pandyas you can see here like in you know, a two fishes two fishes uh, with the shepherd's crook so the fishes represent water they live in the water they represent water bodies so this fishes can live in the sea can live in any water bodies apart from its waves it it, it lives in the water but it will not get like you know affected by the waves of the sea so it this has to do with a lot of things about the pandyas so one of the fish like you know one fish could represent like you know what is that of the natural seas so we if you see the uh, in script uh, the uh, uh, history of the pandyas itself they are very good seafarers they had a very extensive trade so they had a conquest of the sea one is conquesting conquest of the physical sea what we see a samudra the physical sea kadal in tamil so another one is not just like you know uh, the fishes are found within the sea also there is another one sea which is known as heaven so in tamil like you know if you see like you know the word for star is wind mean which is a fish of heaven so the heaven is also like you know of the sky that is also symbolized so this world the sea of this world this is a physical sea then there is a sea of the other world that is the spiritual world so that is a spiritual sea a, a description for the spiritual sea which is about our spirit our uh, spirit and its functions and its faculties everything is constituted by the spiritual sea so there also the pandyas like the fish they can survive any waves they live in like you know in so this is in this way from this inscriptions and from my experiences also what i interpret these two symbolism is that so it represents their mastery over sea mastery over water and that element so this is very much uh, uh, historically also correlated with the pandyan history so if we see the history of the pandyas again and again this theme comes if we see velvikudi chappedugal velvikudi copper plates pandya state that even during the time of deluge when it like you know a big deluge it 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 is again a sign for uh, a a big like you know, engulfing by the sea so pandya stood still at the gates of the ocean unaffected so they are unaffected by the sea and the ocean as the fish is unaffected by the waves of the ocean they are like you know standing firm 
so uh, so this is like you know one of the themes in whale vikudi copper plates it comes and in another copper plates also like you know in the same copper plates the further victory over the sea is stated that like you know the pandya churned the cosmic ocean so as i have said like you know there are two seas one is a ocean of the world another in that also the pandyas did like you know a great conquest another one is the ocean of the cosmos that is of the sky what the cosmic ocean the whole space like you know so that is also being controlled like you know that also is being ruled by the pandyas and uh, then the another one thing what we call in the srivara mangalam srivara mangalam copper plate srivara mangalam cheppedugal so in that mentioned that pandya succeeded at the end of aeon which is in fact reference to the deluge of the velvikudi plates so in another one way also like you know how we can describe the pandya's victory over sea is that if you consider time time as a sea which can engulf everything which keeps all the things like you know if you see like you know the past if you see the past the past is like all the past events are like submerged under sea so apart from this time and the changes which he, which like you know which time introduces everything is subjected to time everything is subjected to change but the pandian family has always has the separate like you know given that grace by god to reinvent itself like you know again and again and again if you see also in the history of the pandyas you find uh, when pandyas were overrun by the kalabra invasion also after some years after like you know 100 to about some 200 years after that in 575 ad pandian kadungon had conquered that by the grace of god and he is coming again so being submerged under the sea or taken engulfed by the aeons what we call as the cycles like you know that's how in hinduism we understand that that time goes in a circle kind of way so in any circle also pandya survive so that is his idea like you know so so that is what again and again being repeated over here srivara mangalam copper plates also says that he succeed at the end of the aeon so then another one is that the javelin of the pandyas in some of the inscriptions in many of the pandya temples you find javelin so javelin you you must be javelin throw you must be so a big javelin will be represented so this javelin is mentioned as like you know if we correlate with the sinamanur plates the javelin of the pandyas is a symbol that it will draw away the sea it is thrown in the sea and the sea will go back so that is how like you know in ukra kumara pandya purana if we see in uh, uh, this uh, uh, tiruvulayadal puranam in tamil the tiruvulayadal puranam this ukra kumara pandya will be driving out the sea out of madurai by throwing a javelin it's a symbolism that he is driving out the chaos from the city of madurai by his javelin by his righteous justice and the truth so that is how we need to understand we we are not supposed to take the things in a very literal way so uh, so it also this copper plates also mentions that uh, pandyas fought against the ocean so it is also said that the pandyas were said as the ones who protect the world surrounded by the sea so another one here another one thing another one copper plates dalavaipuram copper plates so dalavaipuram copper plates also in that also we are finding the same kind of motif that uh, see i have said like you know there are like you know in pandyan mythology like you know there are two two fishes one fish represents the fight against the ocean which is in the world another one represents their cosmic battle which is like you know cosmic spiritual one in dalavaipuram copper plates dalavaipuram cheppedugal how what it is mentioned is that uh the subduing of the sea is interpreted as a cosmological battle in the tamil portion of the copper plate where the rise of the aquarius constellation so here during that time like you know during that time like you know how we understood this uh, the other world is that they through the stars they wind mean in tamil the fish in the sky so like you know it is it is again and again what we can mention is here like you know uh, uh, what we can interpret here it is it is that so this like you know a cosmological battle that this uh, rise of the aquarius constellation this constellation has been rising uh, from the region of the world elephants against other stars and sent sea like waves which was subdued at the foot of the pandyas 
so from like you know in two word, two senses one is of the world as well as of the cosmological plane so in both ways also like you know the pandyas has been interpreted and their battle has been uh, interpreted so the motive of the churning of the ocean reclaiming of the land by throwing the javelin seeing the end of the ocean carrying the weight of the world so all these things are repeated here another one thing is that if we see the tamil portion of the sinnamanur plates uh, like you know in the lion like you know so it will be in the lion 76 in that uh, copper plate if you see that the pandyas belong to the lunar race and they have the crest of the double fish the double fish like you know what i am wearing also of the symbol of the pandyas so uh, that is like in you know, a double fish and it is said that they drove away the sea by throwing a javelin which again comes in the tiruvallayadal puranam which is again mythologized so another one thing the sanskrit portion of the bigger sinnamanur plates so in that also like you know it is mentioned that the waves of the raging sea along with the revolving sun moon and stars which indicates a cosmic ocean or the ashtav ashtavasus yesterday i have mentioned clearly that pandyas describe themselves as the kings over the ashtavasus ashtavasu means five elements that is uh, nilam neer kaatu nerupu aagayam in in the english what we call as like you know the land that is the earth uh, water the element of water and then the element of air kaatu and then the element of fire nerupu or the light and the element of the space or the ether so along with that five elements plus another three components what are they they are sun moon and the stars which are in the cosmic plane so that is should be also conquered so along with like you know so all these things are symbolized as waves as waves like you know, if you see the waves of the raging sea were subdued under the feet of the pandyas so it also mention again that they have churned the ocean that they controlled his senses and passions <clears throat> so one drew away the ocean which came to engulf their madurai so uh, like you know one of the mythological motif here is that like you know in ukra kumara pandya story also it comes that ocean came and tried to engulf madurai and like you know ukra kumara pandya like you know he saved that by throwing the javelin so how we can understand like you know literally what we can say is that people will think that if we take a literal sense literal meaning like you know people think that tsunami came to madurai so that is not correct there there is no recorded instance that like madurai the uh, like you know the ocean came all the way from ramna ramnadapuram rameshwaram until madurai there is no such kind of records are mentioned so what does this mean represents that see state if you if you if you understand the country as ruled by being pandyas so his uh, his work is to establish dharma or the righteousness everything should be in its proper order so this against this order the chaos comes against this order is chaos which is interpreted as a sea so it could probably mean any sort of invasion a spiritual invasion could be also a a battle invasion from the enemy countries also so all that thing was subdued by the pandyas so in sivagasi copper plates also like you know in sivagasi copper plates also we can same kind of like you know thing is that like you know uh, beautifully yesterday also we mentioned about the ashtavasus that indra is mentioned like you know how that fight with indra everything is mentioned here again so now we go like you know to this uh, uh <clears throat> what is its correspondence with bible so how what about the sea this uh, like in you know, a conquest of the sea what is its theme in bible if we see like you know one thing is that god and the primordial ocean if we see biblical cosmogony speaks about a fight between god and the sea so again it's very clear in the bible from the start like you know uh so what it means is that the spirit of god if you go if you go to the genesis chapter first also it is said that like you know the uh, when god created the world there was completely chaos and the spirit of god was like you know it was over there so at that time itself the removing of the chaos which is represented as a ocean or a, or a water body is mentioned in that very clearly so another one is that psalm 74 if you see in the psalm 74 it involves a egon model what we call as egon model so it what what is meant is that it it was you it was who smashed sea with your might 
who battered the heads of the monsters in the waters. You it was who crushed the heads of Leviathan, who left them for food for the denizens of the desert. So here again, God is fighting against the sea. So that comes in the Psalm 74. So how similar, like, you know, the thoughts, like, you know, what we see uh, repeated in the Pandyas, like, you know, their, uh, their thoughts. And what it appears in the Bible, they have got, like, you know, many similarities, what we can say is that. So another one, like, you know, finally in the book of Revelation also, like, in you know, book of Revelation also it comes. Before that, if you could see in this, uh, uh, in the in the like you know in the new testament about lord jesus christ also jesus conquers tommy c like you know so he is like you know conquering the chaos again he is conqueror of the sea so one word from the son of god stills the sea which was raging raging waves if you see like you know jesus also subdues raging waves if you see in the pandian terminology also they say that the raging waves were subdued at the foot of the pandyas so like you know he, so if he, he the son of son of god stills the foe who trembles over the sea like you know jesus was walking on the water mark 6 45 47 to 51 mark chapter 4 verses 35 to 41 everything and uh, so uh, this the so in new testament in the bible also it continues also like you know if we further continue in the book of revelation at the end also if we see revelation 21 chapter 21 verse 1 that there will be no longer sea in the new heavens and the new earth there will be no longer sea so uh, so that is the thing like you know that again like you know this is this explains the power of god by his power he still the sea so job job like you know book of job uh, uh, chapter 26 verse 12 so it is again and again, like you know, again and again, it is very clear in biblical, biblical also. If you see correspondence, is that Pandyas is the subduers, is the uh, subduers of the sea. The same way, if in the Bible also, if you see God shows Himself as the conqueror of the sea, a conquest of the sea. The sea here refers to any sort of chaos. Any sort of chaos could be also like you know, is represented as a sea. So this is the first theme what we had uh, discussed today. Uh, discuss today so another one theme what we are going is that like you know in the Pandian uh, spirituality what we could say is that carrying the weight of the world so this is a very beautiful theme which is uh, uh, described in the theology of the Pandyas what we could say is in copper plates so Pandya Sri Mara Sri Vallabha uh, like you know AD 80, 815 to 862 he is described as the one who bore the burden of the earth. The earth, like you know, earth is like you know, he is carrying the earth. So, like you know, some like you know, if we if we could think like you know, just in literal way, without understanding the context of the Puranas and everything, they say that like you know, oh, he is a superhero. He is carrying the weight. Like you know, he is having that much kind of power. So, not not that kind of thing. Like you know, a, uh, a mother carries mother carries her child. Doesn't means that literally, like you know, mother can carry her child, that is also true. But at the same time, mother is carrying the child, we can also say that mother is taking care of the child and she is concerned about the child, she is concerned about the welfare of the child, she is concerned about everything of the child, like you know. So, the child, like you know, she is she is carrying it as a weight, like you know, though it is weight, like you know, carrying, uh, ca carrying, concerning all these kind of things could be little weight for us could add more weight for us yet like you know we still do that mother do that so that is out of love the same way here pandyas bore the burden of the earth what it could mean the pandyas like you know who are like you know the, what what does earth mean earth is a place where they rule so all the people who were ruled under him so he is carrying them as the father and the mother like you know if we see in the copper in the inscriptions from the tenkasi pandyas it is mentioned ammayim appanumai anaitu virkum as the father and the mother for all the living not just humans all for even for uh, uh, the other creatures also as the father and the mother so as the father and the mother take care of the burden of the child like you know they are taking care of that so that is explained here so it is also said like you know, repeated again in pandya rajasimha uh, as the one who bore easily by the strength of his broad shoulders the great burden of the circle of earth which the lord of serpents bears with much difficulty by his thousand heads 
so here if you see like you know another one mythology is that during that time uh, now we know like you know how gravity is the one which is hold the things together during that time people like there was no concept of gravity as such completely developed maybe there are bits and pieces of it so what they say is that the world is like you know so the world is so big so if there is a weight like you know for example uh, like you know this statue of jesus like you know so why it is not falling down why it is not falling down is that see i am holding it so i am carrying the weight of the statue that's why it is not falling down so what people thought like you know saying that if you consider instead of the statue the whole earth so the whole earth is being like you know carried like you know earth is being like you know someone is giving the support for that so in the vedas it is said that truth like you know in a metaphor in a in a very spiritual sense there like you know what vedas mentions is that truth is the principle which carries the burden of the world so the same like in another way what they say is in mythologically what we say is that what the thing like you know, if you see the elephants the elephants carry the weight the elephants elephants can carry big trunks of weight wood and everything could be carried by the elephants the same way what a world elephants they are carrying like you know, there are like you know some mythological elephants which are carrying the world so in a mythological sense they are like you know interpreting it that another one's the thing is that a big snake named adishesa is is carrying the weight of the world is carrying the burden of the world in its uh, uh, like you know in its uh, back like you know it is carrying that so like you know so it is carrying it with like you know so it is world is very uh, like a lot of heavy it's it's quite heavy world is quite heavy so to carry that it requires a lot of power so the pandyas are mentioned as having that power to carry the world so the carrying the world is not in a very much kind of literal way but that is in the way that they are like you know establishing righteousness and the truth and by that means they are carrying the world also another one like you know if we see in the concept like you know as like in the psychoanalyst braka elettinger also she speaks about carriance carriance is carrying how the mother carries the child through carrying carrying and caring she is carrying the child because she is caring so this in this way also we can interpret it so uh, so this is the thing so the, so these are the ways in which like you know this carrying the weight of the world is uh, is again and again mentioned in the copper plates uh, so in uh, sanskrit portion of the bigger sinnamanur plates also you find that the pandyas as my pandyas are mentioned as bearing the weight of the world so uh, that's the thing so it is also mentioned as one of the purpose of existence of the pandyas that is to carry the weight of the world uh, so uh, as we see like you know so how like you know this carrying this weight of the world is that mentioned in the bible is anywhere it is mentioned in the bible if we say like you know isaiah 46:4 isaiah chapter 46 verse 4 i have made you and i will carry you i will sustain you and i will rescue you. so there are four pra- i the god is mentioning that he has made us he will carry us he will sustain us he will rescue us so this i will carry you god is carrying the world god is carrying us all of us all so this represents god being father and the mother to us as in the pandian copper place also it mentions the pandyas care about the people they care about uh, like in you know, the spiritual welfare of the people uh, as well as the temporal welfare like you know, ensure that people get proper things people get good things everything that they like you know they did with like you know everything like you now there are like you know there are many people who many pandyas who lived up to that some pandyas didn't lived up to that so like you know th- there are like you know differences but most of them tried to live according to this dharma and to rule the people to give the subjects care concern in this way they were carrying uh, the weight of the world that we can say as god is carrying the weight of the world so that is why a king represents the authority of god no authority comes except through god so that's why uh, a king is supposed to be like god in carrying the people and caring for the people and subduing the sea that is the chaos or the disorder should be subdued so in this way in this way uh, like you know uh, in this way we can understand that uh, like you know the that how the pandyas reflect the kingship of god the eternal kingship of god may god 
through his grace give us also this grace to understand these things and help us to carry out our mission to carry our own people our own children or our own relatives or our own people who are interested to us as well as to subdue the sea in our lives amen Now it is a time for intercession prayers our response lord may your kingdom come lord may your kingdom come to christ our king who is first in all things and in whom all things exist let us confidentially pray lord may your kingdom come lord jesus our king and our shepherd gather your flock from every corner of the earth lord may your kingdom come jesus our leader and savior make all people your own heal the sick seek out the lost preserve the strong lord may your kingdom come jesus eternal judge when you hand over your kingdom to your father remember us your faithful people lord may your kingdom come jesus prince of peace remove from men's hearts the greed that leads to war lord may your kingdom come jesus heir of all nations bring all mankind to the kingdom of your church entrusted to you by the father Lord may your kingdom come Jesus first born of all creation and first to be born from the dead bring all the departed to the glory of your resurrection Lord may your kingdom come This is the time like you know we invoke God the Holy Spirit and especially ask for our prayers and our petitions <coughs> Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence welcome holy spirit make us your own welcome holy spirit we are in your presence give us your healing make us your own. dear lord dear lord lord jesus christ thank you very much thank you very much for this wonderful time for this wonderful time for bringing us together here lord when two or three are in my name i am there you said lord thank you very much for this wonderful moment lord especially we we have meditated now on the kingship of god as well as especially to the kingship of kingship of the pandyas we offer all the pandyas and their souls to your care that your eternal mercy be on their soul and may their souls rest in peace amen lord we also pray that lord you have promised us in the revelation also there will be no longer sea at the beginning of the creation also lord your spirit sat over the sea and it was introducing order through thy wisdom and that wisdom came that eternal wisdom came and born as our lord jesus christ lord may through that wisdom may all order be established all over the world may the pandyas and their ideals of establishing dharma or the righteousness all over the world may it be uh, done through our lord jesus christ and his spirit the paraclete lord as well as at this moment we offer all the uh, all we remember and offer all the kings of the pandya dynasty the way they have ruled and many are the times lord they might have fallen out from uh, the righteousness there are many instances also we uh, we mention that the fight between the brothers uh, in the 13 uh, in the 1300s during that time there came to a big fight over in tamil nadu and like you know it came with like you know malikapur invading invading our country everything lord lord you have always said united we stand divided we fall union like you know how beautiful it is when brothers live in unity as in the psalm 133 also you have mentioned lord but we have uh, we have forsaken the unity many times as like you know three brothers the chera chola as well as pandyas three brothers were called to live in unity you have also mentioned that through great poets such as avvai are also lord through them also you have given us the great message that we should live together in unity but rarely lord the three kings move in that they failed to live in unity and their country was scattered across many other things and like you know they were always driven by the thing who is greater among us lord help us to remove from this mentality that all this ego be subdued and maybe we can very much humble maybe understand that we are nothing before you may we learn humility and to live like you know live in your humble presence 
may our self love be taken away and instead of that god your love be there may in this way the sea inside your cast this is the cast for all the chaos in the world may this chaos be completely be subdued through the love through the brotherly love that you have called us to be lord thank you very much lord our god and lord you have given us the grace to the pandyas to carry the weight of the world we are also given many responsibilities to carry the weight for a father in the family he has got the way he has got a responsibility to to carry the weight of his family his wife his children and maybe his mother father all those things he has the he has that duty to carry them as well as could be a for example a uh, an uh, ias officer or a or a chief minister has got all the uh, has got all this responsibility to carry uh, the, to carry and to care about all his subjects lord whatever the station of life we may we might be me we ourselves might find in give us the grace to carry everything for your sake thus we are helping you to carry the weight of the world and you are carrying it through the truth to the spirit of the truth by which you are carrying the world give us more and more graces and sustain us in your grace and your wealth we make our prayer through christ our lord amen now we say gathering all our intercessions now we say our father let us say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil now we say the final prayer almighty ever loving god it is your will to unite the entire universe under your beloved son jesus christ the king of heaven and earth grant freedom to the whole creation and let it praise and serve your majesty forever we make this prayer through our lord jesus christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of god the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen let us bless the lord thanks be god may the almighty god grant us a restful and peaceful night amen thank you very much for watching and this series the spirituality of the pandyas this is the third day first day second day third day first day we uh, we covered about the history of the pandyas and their relationship with christianity so the second day we carried about uh, uh, also their kingship all those elements we have carried we have yesterday we had studied and this this day this third day uh, we have discussed we have meditated upon and we had prayed upon the kingship of the pandyas especially with respect to the subduing of the sea and carrying the weight of the world so tomorrow session is a prayer session dedicated to pray for all the souls of the pandyas kings pandyan kings so as in the catholic theology teaches that after the death of a person the person could be either in heaven that is with god or he could be in purgatory that is a kind of purification place before going to heaven or the third thing the person is in the person a person is in hell in like you know hinduism also we find hell is naraga in naraga like you know that is a complete completely go away from god and his grace and the another one is this kind of purgatory like in you know, a place of purification before entering swarga or heaven that is mentioned also in puranas for example in the story of yayati king yayati like you know he was caught in the uh, place between the uh, like you know between the heaven and between the like you know earth in that that kind of intermediate state is also mentioned and final one it is uh, it is swarga or the heaven where we enjoy the commu- complete communion with god so tomorrow we will be praying for all of them please kindly join for prayers also tomorrow tomorrow 9 o'clock tomorrow 9 o'clock around 9 o'clock maybe around 5 to 10 minutes like you know mostly within 5 to 10 minutes to the maximum late so between 9 to 9 10 before that itself we will be starting mostly by 9 o'clock may god bless you all may god give you a great sleep and a peaceful sleep and a prayerful sleep god bless you all may the almighty god who had made pandyas as his uh, as the as the kings over uh, to rule the south of india may uh, may always bless you god bless you all amen